You want to be organized when you approach your horse for the activity of catching them. Um, if you're not ready and your horse is a little difficult to catch, it sets you up to be behind the eight ball and not be ready for whatever they're going to test you with. So how I get ready to catch is I put the shank in the crease of my left elbow. And then I also have the halter by the nose band and it's in the crease of my elbow as well. So I have two hands to approach them with. People like to approach with the halter first. And I like the halter to not be the main focus point. I want this horse and I to be the, the first interaction we have and it's not about the halter. I like to approach at the shoulder. I usually will pet the shoulder and then come up the neck. Now I like to stand hips parallel to their shoulders. That way if something were to happen, they are not going to run me over. I place this shank over their neck. So now I have him somewhat contained if something were to happen or spook him. Okay. I like to have my right hand on his offside. If he were to look away, then I can have some way to bring him back into my attention here. When I halter them, I always want them looking at me and not away and I don't chase them. If he wants to look away, I'm gonna bring him back to me. Okay, now he's in my space, so we're gonna back him up. But I want him paying attention on task because that is the precedence I wanna set for the rest of our session together. This is how you properly tie a rope halter. I like to make sure the halter is, is snug and pulled up. Often I see halters that are done up and they're too low on the bridge of the nose. What happens is, is actually the cartilage gets very soft in the end of their nose. And if something were to happen and that horse were to get in a wreck with this halter down low, it can do quite a bit of damage to their nose. So I like to make sure it's up on the bridge of the nose. This is also the area of the nose that I would like to put pressure on if I need to communicate with them. So I take slack out of the far side. Okay, so how I teach this is about two and a half inches here, end of the halter towards his eye, and then back through the loop. Now, that lays nice and flat on the loop and brings this tail back out of his eye. I always tuck this tail up to keep it nice and clean. I often see the rope halter tied incorrectly and what people do is they make their knot on top of this loop here. Okay, so there's quite a difference in, in those, those two methods and I'm going to show you the reason why we tie it on this loop. So I'll retie it. Okay, now this is why this works so well. If he were to get into a spot where he got this knot really, really, really tight, the point of this is that I can pry on this loop and make this knot loose so I can get his halter off. If that knot is tied up above, it can tighten down to where you can't get the halters off. So it's very important that we tie that knot on the loop and keep everything neat and tidy. So once we get them haltered, we need to deal with our lead rope. You should never coil your lead rope. This is how you can get your hand caught and get yourself in some precarious situations. So what we want to do with our lead rope is make stacks. So I like my stacks to be the same size and then lay nice and flat in my hand as well. So if something were to happen, nothing's going to get caught. If he were to spook, these loops come out in order and I have them all organized in my hand so I know how much I can let go and, and how much I can hold to keep him with me through whatever might happen in our session. I prefer using a rope halter over a leather or a nylon flat halter 
The surface area is just a little bit smaller and it's a crisper type of communication that your horse understands and respects better. As soon as you pick up your halter shank, you're plugged into your horse. Your energy starts flowing to them and it sets the precedence for the rest of your session. You want to keep a nice relaxed energy on this lead rope, but yet make corrections if need be. If I lead him with a stiff arm and I grip nice and close to where the shank connects to the halter, I'm adding tension to that lead rope and that horse and he can feel that. Horses are so sensitive they can feel a fly land on a single hair on their mane. They can feel exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. So when I lead a horse, I like them two to three feet behind me. I don't like them dragging, okay? And I don't like them running me over and leading me. I want them to have that attitude of what's next? What would you like? What are we doing? When I lead a horse, I really want him to be respectful of my space. Even when he's standing right here, this is too close for me. So how I correct that is the knot on the halter and I back them up. I prefer this one to two foot buffer zone at all times because if something were to happen, he's going to want to come to me. So I need some space and he needs to respect that. One correction that is effective, but we need to be careful with is just shaking the lead rope, okay, to back them up. I've seen horses start to rear, and I don't ever want my horses to start to pop up and rear on the, on the shank. So my correction is not first, and then I'm gonna use my energy. And he should learn to stay away from me just by me using my energy, not having to pull or, you know, shake a shank or use some kind of gimmick. So when I lead them, I like to keep them two feet or so away from me. I don't ever want them in front of me. Some horses like to lead you. So when I turn, he should be reading me and hooked on to me. And I mean, there's lots of work that comes before this process. And when I slow down or stop, he needs to read that if he gets too close. I'll show him where I want him to be. If you're consistent with this formula and keep showing, training, teaching, this just becomes his normal way of being. But consistency is the key. If we correct it only two times out of 10, he's not going to learn that correction. So insist every time, correct, correct, correct. That's that formula you wanna build and that boundary that they need to understand. And if I speed up, he should speed up. If I slow down, he should slow down. There, that was really good. So at the end of a session, I always want to be very diligent about how I take the halter off because that's our end note. That's how we, we quit and and I let him go graze or eat his hay. Again, I return this shank to the crook of my left arm. This comes in handy when you start saddling and, and working with horses and colts because you have two hands to do things with, but yet you still have that connection and that shank handy if, if need be. When I take the halter off, I want him flexed into me. I can use this left hand to bring his nose over and keeps him right in front of me in this nice working area. This part of the halter I want to keep on the right side of his neck. If he were to look away, I can use my left hand or my right hand to bring him into me. I don't want him too close, but I want him in a spot that's safe and very usable. When I take the halter off, I drop it straight off. I return it to the crook of my arm. I like to pet their nose right here and try and spend just Couple seconds petting them here. I want them to know that I enjoyed working with them and have them look forward to the next time I come and catch them and, and we do some work together. Mm -hmm.